Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. It's Monday. That means it's another week of live radio right here on the Kev Baker Show. And we do that on Truth Frequency Radio Network, tfrlive.com. Your one, number one network, and where we like to give you protection from deception. And I'm coming to you from a very thawed out Glasgow, Scotland, and we're going all the way to Australia, back to Alaska. We've got listeners in Norway, Poland, and even Nebraska. And like I say, we can only do that thanks to Truth Frequency Radio, tfrlive.com, your number one network. Big shout out to anyone that's tuning in over on Talk Stream Live as well. And to all of the people over on the KBS Discord. A big warm welcome to all of you. So another week of live radio is on the horizon. And I can't think of a better way to kick off a week than having a new guest on the show. Although it's not entirely new for me because I've had the pleasure of working with this gentleman a number of times now. And he's also become the newest member of the team over on Warrior Mode. We've got faith, we've got strength, we've got courage. There was me, Bill and Travis. But now we've also got street cred. Yes, we have got our main man, Derek Stroman. He is somebody who spends most of his time behind the camera. He's in broadcasting. But he also has his own take on what reality is all about. He talks about energy, ladies and gentlemen. And we are here on Truth Frequency, Frequency Radio. Everything is frequency, vibration, and energy. And tonight we're going to be getting into that very, very deeply indeed with our special guest. He's here. Um, there he is, Derek. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on the KBS show. And hello uh, to the audience out there. And uh, I'm excited about the show. I'm excited about having you here, Derek, but I want the audience to find out more about who Derek Stroman is. I was introduced to you via Bill Bean, and I appeared on your little, I think it was a, a network-type TV show thing out of Baltimore. I had yes, a brilliant sir. time that night. You made an instant impression on me. I think you've made a brilliant addition to the team of Warrior Mode as well. So I'd like for you to tell the audience a little bit about who you are and and how we ended up crossing paths, and, of course, how you met Bill Bean. Uh, absolutely, Kev. Um, my name is Derek Stroman. Uh, you can see my banner in the back there. I got a company called Stroman Entertainment, and Entertainment, excuse me, which I started uh, back in 2013. And uh, I haven't looked back ever since. It's just, um, it's an entertainment-based company. Um, you name it, I do it. From film to, you know, uh, photography, um, of course, videography, cinematography, uh, weddings. If if people need weddings, I'm an event planner. Um, as you know, as you mentioned, Kev, I've uh, also had my own talk show on a pretty prominent radio station here called uh, WCBM 680. It was an AM broadband uh, station and network. I uh, had a show there that ran for a little while called the Speak Your Mind Show. And that's how I met Bill, uh, through a gentleman by the name of Ron Savage, suggested him as being a really good guest to have on my show. So he came to the studio, interviewed him, and he was great. And you know how Bill is. I mean, uh, you've talked to him and you know his presence. So once well, you get around... Well, I was going to ask you, what's it like, though, being physically in his presence? Because... Um, Bill would hate to know that we're talking about him because he's the most modest guy in the world. But even via Skype, um, he done a deliverance for me that had me breaking down crying live on air. Um, I've never felt anything like it in my life before, Derek. I can actually get goosebumps thinking about it. So sure. I, I felt Bill's energy, albeit remotely. I would imagine when somebody like Bill walks into the room, there's a presence, right? 
It's powerful. And I'm glad you mentioned energy. And you know how I feel about energy. You and I have been on a couple shows now, like you said, uh, Bill show that you coordinate so well. Uh, you're brilliant behind the helm, the way you run a show. And you run several shows. I just wanted to let you know that. I'm, I'm very impressed being in the field that I am. Um, with how you're able to coordinate uh, so many things, technology, and, and, and still speak so elaborately about things as well. But um, but you're you're exactly right. Bill's energy is is supreme, and that's why I talk about energy so much, or, or how I can detect energy so well. That that kind of power powerful vibration and frequency, the way it flows, you can't see it, but you can feel it now. It's there if you had the ability to see it through wavelengths, you would see it. So just imagine if we, um, you know, you watch, and I do, watch a lot of uh, sci-fi programs and, uh, you, you know, the notion of people having special powers. Imagine if you were blind to the physical form, but all you saw was energy waves, something like what the Matrix would be. You know, so, and, and uh, that's what you would see, just flows of energy, and that's how you would detect things. You wouldn't see physical form, you know, clothing, anything like that. All you would see is specks of light and flows of, of, of uh, wavelengths of energy and other energetic substances, you know, and that's what, that's what you're getting with people like Bill. His array is so very strong, you can detect it without even having me meeting the man or have met the, the gentleman. You you felt it through what he was saying to you, the vibrations and tones in his voice through, in this case, you know, the World Wide Web giving us an audio feature so we can hear each other. And it was still that powerful through that kind of connection. Now, just imagine if you were in his company standing right beside him like I've been several times and so many times in the past. So I detect it right away because I'm looking for it. You know, I can feel it as I get closer, you, you know, to, to the entity. You can you can feel it just arraying and um, omitting from them. So. so Derek, is this something that you've always been blessed with? Um, I tend to think of people who can detect these energies and talk about the energies you do. I think it's something we can all do. It's just something that not all of us know how to do it, if that makes sense. But when, when did you become aware of energies? So what it is, this is what these energy signatures do. They're very unique in this light. Uh, it's more than just an energy signature. It carries the energy flow and patterns carry your personality. See, this is this is what you have to look out for. This is what I study and I pay so close attention to. It it shows signatures to your personality, but also it covers deceit, it covers intentions, okay? It covers past events. It's it's amazing. I, I'm just really good at, at picking up on it. I can pick up on people in, or who are in distraught. If you're really happy, if you're really sad, if you're jealous, all, all of the human emotions, think about it, they're emotions. Uh, we're, if, we're, if we're just a physical, and all of us are just physical beings, just do, do the simple math on what us as human beings are in the physical. All it is is flesh and bones, uh, primarily composed of water and matter. Think about it, right? But why do we feel? Where, where, where are these emotions coming from? Where is that generated from? Is it generated from the brain? Is it generated from the heart? Well, the brain and the heart are still mass. But how is that possible? How is it possible for your for your for your brain to to make you feel a certain type of way? Because remember, if you if you cut off a certain portion of your brain that that detects pain, then your body could sustain pain without you even feeling it. So that explains physical pain. But what about the emotions? Where 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 do they come from? So this this is where the energy signatures carry they carry it along with you through your heat the generation of heat and, and cold. Right now my hands are, they're a little cold, I can feel them, but if I rub them together, I'm generating more heat and I put them back, they're warmer, you know what I mean? So it's, 
Now, Derek, is it fair to say, um, I've seen studies before that talks about the, the heart and how it's actually got neuron-type cells within the heart. Um, now, I'll get you to speak to that, but just listening to what you said to begin with there, when I was in the military, I was in the Royal Signals. So we used to do communications, Morse code, VHF, mm -hmm. all sorts of things, mainly satellites where I ended up. But when I was getting taught, it was very interesting listening to you there because it really kind of sounded familiar to me from a technical standpoint. And what yes, I mean sir. is that when we were using frequencies, we would use that electromagnetic wave to carry information from one point to another, wherever your end station was that you were transmitting to. And electromagnetic waves, we know our brain produces them, we know our heart produces them. And that then makes sense to me that it carries the information contained within the whole out mm -hmm. there and broadcasts it. So what you're saying to me, it's like music to my ears, man. This, this makes perfect sense. Well, you hear me subtly bring it up in our conversations, but I know we're there uh, not for me and primarily for me to be talking about this conversation that we're having now. So I just you know, sprinkle it in and, you know, you and I, we, you know, we go over it a little bit and, you know, I'm all over it. And and, and the other fellas and our guests uh, uh, at the time might appreciate it as well. But uh, I'm very happy to be on your show to be able to spend more time talking about it because it is, it is unique. And like you said, I don't think everybody really understands how to utilize it. I, I think that, um, like you also said that everybody possesses the gift but if you if you're not paying attention or conscience of it then you're 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 not you, you don't know how to utilize it you don't you, you we usually just feel a certain way you know you let those emotions take over instead of understanding why you feel what you feel because you can you can easily maybe not necessarily easily all the time but you can deactivate or or somewhat fend, fend against the, how you're feeling at the time, because it you know it can make you nervous. It, it you know it can make you scared. To make it make you know it makes you um, anticipate more, um, and it, so you have to be you have to be careful with it because uh, there's there's been stories you know people just come up and just you know strike somebody because they're they're just they're just scared of them. They don't know why they they hit them or they attacked them. There's been unconscious attacks that happen all the time. Is people's reaction your body can almost just react unconsciously without without your true control because of of how energy you know uh, uh, um, attracts and and also pushes energy away so you you gotta you, you gotta be careful but like I said it, these things happen but this conversation wouldn't come up as as a reason to why those things happen or that incident happened. But, it, you know, I, I noticed it, like I said, and I think you asked me this question so I can answer it. I was real young um, and I, I left to go to Germany at four years old. Now, this is something that I, I've been wanting to talk, to talk to you about and have this discussion with you because, you know, I spent some time in Europe, a lot of time in Germany, that is, but I had a chance to go to the UK for a little while. And that was a unique experience for me because it, it just was different over there. You know, vehicles drove on the other side of the road. I didn't understand that. I was just, I, I remember being in, in the car with my dad and I'm just like, what is going on, dad? We're on the wrong side of the road. Like what's what's going on? The steering wheel's on the other side. So uh, that, was a, that was a unique experience for me. But more of my time in Europe was spent in Germany, just traveling base to base with my father, who was in the army, and being at that time essentially the only child. I'm the oldest of of the boys, and you know my father had a daughter as well, so it, I had to learn things on my own. It was just Mr. Military Sergeant Stroman and his son. You know, so, you know, he, he did his best. He did his best to explain to me and try to be that um, loyal, that hardworking, dedicated uh, Army soldier and, and raise his, his son as a single father. So I just I just started 
wondering, looking around. Um, the German people were really, really good to me. They treated us really nice. Um, and and I just started to, to uh, try to figure out why I was feeling certain ways. So I'd be sitting in the living room with you know some people speaking a language that I didn't understand, which I do speak German uh, and still understand German a lot. And I just picked that up at being a sponge as a kid, never went to school or anything like that. That's how young I was and how you can obtain information by just listening and being so young in a growing and absorbing phase. So I still understand German. I could, I could read it and I could still, like I said, watch a program and still understand what they're saying. So in in learning in that type of fashion, you're, you're, you're also trying to understand the environments that you're in. What, what are you feeling? Are you scared? Are you feeling good? All, all the emotions, you have to pay attention to them. I don't think people pay attention to their emotions enough that with their with their body for you start to sweat a little bit you're, or you're you know whatever just some kind of nervous reaction that you're not paying attention to well i started to pay attention to it and and this is this is what started to happen to me i started to try to figure out why things were happening okay so if I'm doing a lot of things wrong, bad things, uh, being being a bad child, and you know that you're doing it, okay? This is how the energy is working against you. You know what you're doing. People with bad intentions, they they know it. Your 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 energy signature is 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 is, is letting you know that it knows. So now, what what happens to you in return? bad things start happening to you. And then you're asking yourself, man, why, why is everything bad happening to me? What's going on? I don't, you know, I'm such a good person. I don't understand it. But you're not taking into account what you did and your intentions behind them. Yeah, so yeah. I, I mean, I'm listening to you here. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's amazing because I, I, I'm very honest. In fact, probably too honest at times. I wasn't a, a very nice character at times when I was growing up, when I was younger. I was a bad lad. Um, I can tell you something, looking back now, there was always an instance, there was always an opportunity that arose, either just before I was getting into trouble or, or even, not necessarily trouble, but something that wasn't good, you, you know? Yep. There would always be that voice. There would always be that little feeling, that little knot in the gut, that, that little telltale sign. And looking back, hindsight's a brilliant thing. If I'd listened to that from an early age, that would have kept me so right. Uh, it would have protected me from so much of the bad stuff that, like you say, you end up sitting there wondering, well, how, how's all this crap happening to me? But it's only when you get older and you look back and you realise you had an opportunity. Your higher self, the energy, it was telling you it was wrong, you know? You just didn't you. pay attention. Because what is what is right and wrong? And, and, and this is something that I have this discussion all the time. I mean... Is it really factual based? I mean, how do you tell somebody if they're right or wrong? I'm not talking about facts that are stated in, in books that says this is the answer. One plus one equals two. I'm not. Obviously, that's you're either right or you're wrong. I'm talking about if I do something or say something, but you tell me I'm wrong, but I feel as though I'm right. How how am I really wrong if if I don't feel like I was wrong? You know, so that to me, in a lot of cases, is based on opinion. But that's not what we do as a, as a society. What we do as a society is we say overall what we all as as the masses think is right or wrong. That's how we identify if that if what you did or said was right or wrong. And that's that's where laws and and, and you know governing came into place, policing. You're not allowed to do that. That's violating the law. We have punishments and you know uh, conditions of dis disciplinary conditions for how severe of what you do because we have to keep that at a minimum because if everybody runs around doing that, then we have total and chaos. So they have to police it. You know, think about think about in the beginning, people were you know I, my wife's from Iceland, okay. She is a Viking. She she comes from the purest forms of, of what, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a Mongolizoid is. She is pure in nature. She's not mixed with any other culture, you know. So, you know, the Vikings, 
they took what, what they wanted, you know, they, 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 you know, um, pretty much went across the entire world. I mean, you, yeah, you, you do, I agree with you, dude. They were a small island, almost conquered the world. I mean, how do you explain that? But, you know, that's a story for another time. But the reason why I even brought it up is because that time you took what you wanted and you had no remorse about it. But you, that couldn't go on forever, right, Kev? We couldn't just run around hacking people up and just taking land. So policing and saying, look, this cannot happen no longer. If, if you do this, then you have repercussions, okay? So were they, were they right or were they wrong? How, how, you know, it, it's part of history now. You can't change it. So, and, and just to kind of reel everything in to, to get back to a, a more simple form of what I'm trying to say is it gets simple. It's, it's simple things that we ask ourselves and, and we do. If I spank my child for doing something that, you know, bad and in this society now, you, they say, don't don't hit your, hit your child or, you know, you could be punished for even putting your hand on your child. Was I right or was I wrong? Well, that's a matter. And that's that's where that's where I'm getting at when I when I talk about right and wrong. OK, so, you know, you, let's let's bring it all back around. We, we live, this is how we live day to day. We're trying to do what is right without violating, you know, our own ethics, our own morals, and, and, and be accepted, accepted by our peers as well. You know, so growing up, like I did, like I said, four years old, going to Germany, being around these people who I've never, they're not family. I just, I sat and I had a lot of time to think, Kev. And that's why, you know, I started picking up on these energy signatures, you know, I, I just started. And then, I, you know, it, it wasn't until later down the road that I knew how to control it, though, Kev. It, it, it's, I, you know, I, I can fall victim to it sometimes, but I swear to goodness, it, listen, you, you've been around me for a little while now, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I have reached a level of total moderation. I know how to how to talk to people properly. I know how to um, emit the proper kind of energy and keep it true and natural. Because if you if you're looking at yourself in the mirror every day, Kev, and you just cannot stand yourself, think about it. You look in the mirror and you're like, man, I just <sighs> sometimes it's the hardest place to look, dude. It's the hard. Yep. It's, thank you. You knew where I was going with that. And I'm sure the listeners are understanding, too. You look in the mirror every day. How many times do you look in the mirror at yourself? How do you feel about you when you see yourself, that reflection? But what are you hiding? Are you are, are you devious? Are you, you know, are you really your, your worst enemy? Are you something that you really despise? And if those answers are yes to those kind of harsh questions, then what are you doing to make yourself better? And if you're not doing those things, then maybe you don't have a problem being all those bad things. You see what I mean? So now your energy, your energy. If you walk up to me and you're that person, Kev, I'm going to pick, pick it apart right away. I'm going to say, wow, this person has a lot of issues. And I, I just, when I detect those kind of vibrations, and negative is, and that's a lot of negativity. Say, I, you know, we're talking negative and positive energy flows and ion uh, emissions. I usually just distance myself from people like that. You know, I was having a conversation with a good friend, and um, it would be really wonderful if we were in a perfect world where everyone's intentions were good, and um, where everyone thought on this positive kind of attitude that we're talking about here. And, wanting to help one another as opposed to use one another. Mm -hmm. I look around the world right now, Derek, and um, despite the vast awakening that truly is happening, it's happening. People are waking mm -hmm. up more and more, but there's still so many people that are self-centered, selfish, and they can come along and take advantage of people that are being positively energetic and and that, that for me, brother, it's like, it's so frustrating. So so what would you say to people out there? I mean, it's one thing being nice and trying to help people around you, but we've got to be on our toes as well, right? Because there's people out there that will take advantage of that. And I hear about people being energy vampires as well. 
and and yep. that's a real thing. So what would you say to people about that? You know, good good segue into that. That's brilliant. That's a brilliant question. And you know, I love when you when you ask those questions. You know, I'll I take just you to the just places the, you want to go, yeah, Derek. You Don't you worry. To the places, and just so you guys know, Kev is good for doing this. He's he's quite experienced in knowing how to how to draw hold the. Hold that right. thought, then hold that thought, because we're on our first break, and we'll be back in three short moments. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second part of today's Kev Baker show right here on your number one network, Truth Frequency Radio, www.tfrlive.com. Let me take this quick opportunity to remind our listeners that Don Wiskin, my good friend Don Wiskin, it's February, and that means one thing over at Extendovite HQ. It's the annual sale. Please, please, please take advantage of that. For one month only, February, get your orders in like everyone else takes advantage of. Please, folks, you know me, I still take the Extendivite to this day. I swear by it or else I wouldn't be able to come on here and tell you about it, okay? So check out heartdrop.com. That's heartdrop.com. And Don, of course, is a major supporter of the network here. So a big shout out to Don and the family. And let's get back to Derek Stroman. Because yes. Derek is here today. This yes. is awesome. There's a good energy about the place, and I use that word wisely because some guests come on, and like we were talking with Bill Bean, they bring a certain air with them. They bring a, an aura, an atmosphere. And Derek is somebody that when he comes onto the stream, when any time I've been on a show with him, he instantly brightens things up. You can tell right away this is a positive dude, <laughs> and I love the way he thinks, but not all of us are so thoughtful of others and there are people out there unfortunately who will take advantage of the very nicest of us people who are very selfless people who would do anything to help others unfortunately though Derek there's people out there with a darker energy I mentioned energy vampires what would you say to people out there how can you become aware of being in the presence of somebody like this or or what would you say to this topic of the other side of things where it can get a little bit dark? Ghosts, goblins, vampires, they all exist. Just different forms. You know, you see them every day. Um, and that's what you're talking about right now. Um, right now, you're talking about energy vampires. Um, instead of sucking your blood or, you know, withdrawing blood from your body they're draining you of your your energy your positive energy and i tell you what derek a lot of times as well um let me be even more specific i, I think physical people act a, a, as energy vampires as well as some of these paranormal supernatural entities you know yeah Absolutely. I mean, you can you can feel it if you're if you're paying attention to it. Some people like to like to argue about things that aren't significant. That that drains your energy. It's it's it, you wonder why you if you're trying to appease a situation and they're constantly at you about uh, picking, trying to find a reason to get you to argue. It's draining. It's draining. If you don't know what to do about it, you just succumb to it. You just you, either you you argue back and forth or um, you just give in, like you were saying, you're submissive. And it's it's sad because some people are just really, really giving people, people who just want to do, and like you said, selfless, just want to do, do, and, and uh, provide. And as soon as that's detected by one of these energy vampires, you're, you're, you're instantly a victim or could become one and that's what happens is these people jump right on you like leeches and hey can i have this and you know yeah well when are you gonna pay me back oh don't worry i'll pay you back i'll pay you back well you, you owe me so much but uh and then they give you the stories oh look i'm sorry you know this and that and it doesn't necessarily have to be drug related people i'm just talking about people who know how to get what they want because they've detected your submissive energy flow and it's it's just it's just easy to do so 
how do I know these things? I had to learn. I was able to do these things. When, when you, you think about it, you you know, you got um, Blackburn, and I think this is the name of the movie, or Brightburn. You have movies, you know, we, the, the beautiful thing about being able to capture things via um, audio and video and having directors in Hollywood, even independent directors, uh, you, we create stuff in our mind and with the camera, and some equipment, we can bring it to life. The best have done it. So, if you wanna, if you wanna uh, c come up with a story of how how you're able to manipulate people with your mind and and showcase it via a movie, it, you're telling a story. You're telling how you could do it. I learned that I could do it, and I started doing it. It's 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 so easy. Oh, I just come in. You, you see these tricksters all the time. You see them all the time. You come in, you you know they might, you know, be charming, uh, you know, or, 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 or look something, smell good, because you know that's another thing. Our detection of smell. Study how smell really recalls memories. It makes you feel a certain type of way towards somebody. It, it's it's inviting. It it doing, you know, things of that nature. And I was taking advantage. I knew I could do it. But then, like I was explaining to you, Kev, I was wondering why bad things were happening. I'm like, what is going on? I'm just this awesome guy, yeah, right? That's what you say. Oh, I'm, I'm so great. I mean, I'm not doing anything wrong. But then I started realizing, oh, that's what you're doing. That's deceitful. You're, you're taking advantage of people. Other people and a lot of people don't have remorse. They don't have remorse. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care that they've taken away from you or, or, or deprived you or, or essentially robbed you of, of all everything, your dignity, your, you know, everything that, that, you know, essentially made you you only and strictly because they knew that they could. And that's that's these creatures. They're in human form, but they're they're treacherous and they're and they're they, they cause problems. You know, and so, I mean, you know, I can go on and on about no, that. No, that's brilliant. And we were talking about something through the break. Um, I'd love for you to share with the audience because um, we were talking about how we do warrior mode and the mm. topics we get into there. Sometimes it doesn't really fit to go all energetic and positive, negative type, type of conversation. Only I was offering to you, I think there is an occasion when we can fit in this information and that is because we're talking about energy here. I use mm -hmm. the example of, say, your grandmother or somebody in the family haunting a house. She's going up and down the stairs for argument's sake. Now, it's a horrible thought to think that your grandmother's soul is trapped for eternity going up and down the stairs. But yeah. I don't really think that's what's happening there. And I think it's to do with the energy that you talk about. And um, I talk about stone tape theory. Again, it's kind of out there but it's basically the building the fabric the stone it records events that happen via the energy that you talk about and i was going to get your thoughts on that do, do you think that a lot of the hauntings more residual type hauntings it, it's more a, a a ghost image of a past event as opposed to granny being stuck on the stairs w would you agree with that I would. And so if energy never dies, then what happens to it, right? Um, you would figure in a logical, you know, my using my Dr. Spock logic here, I, I, I would say that it would hover around in an area that it feels comfortable okay? and it would move gradually to another location. Okay. This, this movement of passage can pass through anything, right? Because it's just energy. It, it, it doesn't, it, it's not necessarily f fixated uh, in one place for too long. However, that one place, there could be, you know, a, a little bit of an influx of how that energy is reacting to maybe the, the, the other energies around it. And, and that's when you're gonna start feeling things. You might see a little movement of something because it's powerful, it's there, it's there. You just don't see it with the naked eye. Again, back to imagine if you could see all these 
waves of of energy, you know, emitting all the time, you would see everything, everything that emits some kind of heat signature. So you would see all the spots, even the ones that you leave behind. I get up out this, this seat here. Now, I just left a heat signature right there. How long is it going to stay there? Well, I, I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows, but that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with passages of energy that just m moves about. Now, you think about I'm that as well, Derek, but um, your most typical haunted locations, right? Hospitals, mental asylums, prisons, hotels. These are places that see constant repetitive traffic up and down yeah. corridors and hallways and all of those energies, like Derek says, every footprint leaving a little heat mark, every yeah. thought being sent out there, um, that, that makes, I'm telling you, you're making perfect Spock logic sense to me. That's all I can say. <laughs> yep. How can you ignore it? Okay, yeah. so what if it just doesn't do anything? What if it, okay, let's think of it in its simplest form then, Kev. All right, I make, I step on the ground, I leave a little bit of a heat signature. It's, it's there, it's right there for a moment. However long that it lasts, it's hot right there for a moment. How is that interacting with with other matter? We're, we're this is matter. We, you know, there's gravity. You don't see gravity, but it's there, right? You know, so if it's if it's if it's in control and it has some kind of control, how do we know what it's capable of doing? We, we don't. We just don't. We we just think it's nothing because we're all moving about. Not not only that. Not only that. Let's. I'm going to take it somewhere else too, Kev. Some people do believe in reincarnation and some people don't, okay? Um, some people do believe in, um, you know, we, we have to um, endure some of what our past uh, heritage uh, or family tree or something that happened decades, centuries ago and you know curses or uh, uh how you say it, woo, woo woo is that the word that you use the woo um, yes the woo, woo and, and and things that are were put on your future generations to deal with that you had nothing to do with but that's just the way it works so now you're talking about all of those things that have afflicted you and your family okay which a lot of people believe in that you see you hear people say it all the time man i don't i don't know what your what your family did back in the days or i don't know what kind of curses you got on you man but you, you're all messed up why can't that be true and and that also is having a, an effect on your life and you, how do you how do you battle it this is how you battle it will you win all the time maybe not maybe not you have to right wrongs Think about it. It's it's every classic movie of how where where the good guy wins in the end, right? It's you have to right wrongs. How are you gonna right wrongs that you don't even know anything about? Okay, well that's a whole nother story. But what if you're like us, Kev, and you're conscious and you're like, wait a minute, something things aren't right. Things aren't right. What what, what do I need to do, Kev? Like, you know what? You know what? Something. I got to do something. This is this is how I will start. I will start paying attention. I will start being conscious of the way people think and the way people feel. And I will start treating people the way I would like to be treated. Now, you got to be careful with that. We use a lot of terms loosely. Some people are glutton for punishment. Some people like to be treated bad. So you got to watch out for those too. So you don't want those people treating people the way they want to be treated because that's that's bad treatment, almost like a masochist or something of that nature, de de depending, depending on the level of it. But when it's me, I know how I want to be treated. So I'm going to exercise those actions as an output. And then sooner or later, I, I should start seeing some kind of results coming back to me because, you know, you treat people how you want to be treated. Um, and it, 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 again, that you got to take that in 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 a, in, a, in a perception of you. Yeah, that's how, the dangerous part, right? Because that's where that's the, yeah, that's where you're open to being taken and, advantage and, of. And, 
and that's why I'm I'm trying to reiterate that. Now, yeah. again, it's it's listen, it's it's nothing simple about it. it. Existence is not it's not easy. You're born, you're all of a sudden you're here, right? You pop out, you, uh, you know, your mom and here you are. Welcome to the world. Go ahead, tiger. You know, give it your best shot, right? And who who's teaching you? Who's grooming you to 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 be prepared? for what the world has to offer you, you know? And and not not only that, not only that, and I'm gonna go here with you too, Kev. We we are creatures that devour things, whether we like it or not, we have to. We have to eat food, we we drink, we we need things to survive because that's how our body continues to function, right? So meanwhile we're cutting down trees, we're, we're taking advantage of things, we're, we're creating small. Listen, there, there is a, a timeline for us that is just a, a cycle that we have to get used to and, 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 and not necessarily be comfortable with, but understand and take, take solace in knowing that you're going to live forever anyway. I tell people all the time, Kevin, I say, I'm not going to die. I'm going to live forever. Yep. I'm never going to die, there's Kevin. There's a big part die. of me that I do, I think, um, I think, because I can't prove it, but I, I do think we reincarnate. Um, I think we come here to learn various lessons. And I'm like you. Um, when I had the two heart attacks at just 40, um, 40 years old, it's probably way before anyone should start really thinking about mortality, things like that. Sure. But it really made me take a look at things and them. Um, but as opposed to being scared, I I'm like you. I, I often joke it's going to flash up level two or uh, game over. <laughs> or, or I do a lot of gaming. You're just going to respawn somewhere. Respawn. Yeah. You're going to respawn. Um, I, I don't think a, a lot of people say oh, it's quite scary. I, I look at it the other way. I think it's exciting, dude. I think it's exciting the journey that we're on and what the journey after holds as well. Yeah, and, and you just touched on it right there. And thank you that you went there again the way you know how to do. The I, journey, I think I channel Art Bell or something because it's you, not me. It's not me. <laughs> you do it all the time. It's so it's so perfect the way you do it. But um, I love it because it you know sets me right up for the next thing that I want to say. But that's, that's, that's exactly right. It's There's more to this. There's more to this. You know, it's... This is this is a cool place for now, you know, but what's what's next? What's next? If you you know, right now as I sit in this chair and I speak to your audience, I, I feel something inside me that just I, I can't explain, you know. It, hence maybe maybe a soul, you, you know. Um I think I can toss that word around a little bit. I think there's, you know, a nice split out there of all the billions of people that actually believe that we have one. Maybe some don't. But is that what makes me feel the way I feel right now? Pretty, pretty good. It's, it's you know, I don't know. I don't know. It feels good. I, I don't want to. I'm not going to believe or try to convince myself that this what I'm feeling. This inside, this internal presence within me is just going to die it, it, or, or just there has to be more to it. It's going to, is it people believe in heaven? Some people believe in hell. If you believe in one, that means you believe in the other. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not quite certain about that because if, what, what are you saying? So, so, uh, you know, my, my, if I, if my physical form passes away or when it's time, it's duration runs out, the soul rises above someplace. If 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 I'm worthy, and if I'm not worthy, it'll it'll recess somewhere into a you know a, a more underground level. I'm not I'm not sure about that. That's why I'm such a strong universe believer. Substance, maybe maybe all particles just go back into the universe, into into the galaxy. And now you become one of everything, because that's what I tell people when um when they lose a loved one, and I say um, a lot of times I say, hey, well, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, but now now your your uncle is is one with all of us. You, we get a, a a piece of that. It it just we're all one big entity. We're all here together, floating on a planet in orbit in outer space. I mean. 
<laughs> no, lot, I agree with you there, dude. A lot I, of times people forget that. I, you know, you're... <laughs> I do agree with you. And there's so much more going on than what we even appreciate. Um, in recent months, we've kind of been talking on the show a lot about even our own original thoughts. Um, I'm thinking along the lines of people that have invented things, stuff like that. We, we often speculate uh, and wonder as to whether there's something akin to a Hall of Records, some call it the Akash, call mm -hmm. it the collective consciousness, mm -hmm. because there's sometimes really weird things happen when one person discovers something on one side of the planet. You know, it seems like a totally unique discovery, but then you find out that totally independent of that, with no knowledge whatsoever it was going on, somebody say in India, or maybe somebody down in Australia has come up with exactly the same thing exactly yep. the same time so does that suggest to you like it does to me that there's almost this collective consciousness and we are already all interconnected even if we don't yes. know it and, and a twin or several twins yeah. you know how the, the the thought the way the mind works the way that we only and i, I don't know the exact percentage but i know that we're only using a, a very small percentage of our brain power. How, how, I think they say ten percent. They say ten percent. So we'll we'll use that as a ballpark. We'll just say we're using less than half. What's that all about? Exactly. Why, think about it. Why do we have every last one of us, with the exception of a few and some mammals, you know, whales, dolphins, or whatever? What what is the what was the deal with that? I mean, you. I'm going to create you, and I'm going to give you the ability to use. Um, telekinesis and actually bend metal objects, but you know you're not going to be able to use it. And, and even more on from that, Derek, think about how the brain itself, I often make the comparison to the computer, um, but the brain itself chopped into two hemispheres. Yep. You, right. you know, you either end up a right-brained person, a right-side or, or a left-sided, left-brained person. You know, again, if you could unite the two, I mean, what was that all about? Why did that happen? Well, what about, so what does that speak of then? Where there was a time you hear, you know, people talk about the the, um, the, the Mayans and uh, ancient society of, of more purity. They were able to use more of their of their, their brains. And then, you know, I guess we go through, um, you know, a downgrade phase of, of humanity. Where you think we, it's like a, like a sine wave that goes up and down? And, and that's what where I was getting at, you know, depending on how long the, the Earth, the planet Earth, plans on existing, okay, without deteriorating, which even in normal timelines, it, it, it seems, you know, way over the road. I know, I know the Earth's core is, uh, is, is pretty much, um, you know, deteriorating from the inside out. We know that. A lot of people know that already. But... That's years and years down the road. What is the true end phase? If in you know evolution never stop evolving, so that means things continue to evolve. We as human beings have evolved from you know a, a certain height, a standard, a certain lifespan as a as a as a as a standard, or you'll live to a, maybe be about. 30 and then that's it you, you know expect to expect to pass on now life uh, spans are getting longer due to technology and medicine um so maybe i don't know 300 400 years down the road maybe we'll be able to use more of our power uh, our brain powers just simply due to evolution and that's that's the cycle that you're talking about that wave to where we will be able to do that again, you know? So it's, you know, we're only we're only living in the times, the times that we're here and we're subject to whatever conditions that, that we're, we have in front of us or around us at that time. And then our time runs out, right? Our physical time runs out. And then the, the, next, the next cycle of, of mankind or, or humanity takes over after that. And then they're gonna deal with whatever is presented to them so and i think this happens on other planets as well um i think they go through rises and falls and you know i i'm this very much the same as you derek i can interchange the language that we use here and yeah. you, people can call it god i'm comfortable with that but at the same time i'm equally comfortable calling it source the yep. universe yep. higher power 
Um, it's something out there. I don't mind what people name it or what their own personal belief system is. Um, but it feels almost like sometimes when you think about it that way, it's like there's either some code that's built into the simulation that makes sure that just before we attain the level of consciousness or technology required to escape, something comes along and sets us back to the dark ages and we have to start again, you know? Speaking of the dark ages, this is this is what I used to do all that solo time I had as a kid, just by myself, you know, running around my dad's somewhere doing his doing his duties and I'm sitting in a room by myself playing, you know, by myself. I started to scare myself and I'm gonna see if I can take the audience here with me. Okay. Where do we come from? Okay. That's how I started the question. Where do we come from? And I, I used to close my eyes and envision this, right? When your eyes are closed, you see darkness, right? And you start asking yourself these questions. Where do we come from? Okay, well, you're looking at me like, well, okay, Mr. Stroman, Derek, what, 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 yeah, we know you, but you come from your mom. Uh, well, okay, I get that. What, what about, what about the planet? Well, uh, Big Bang Theory, you know, uh, the universe, whatever, you know, uh, you know, exploded, whatever it works, okay? And all this was created from the Big Bang Theory. Okay, and this is what I'm doing as a kid. Are you listening to me as a kid? Um, well, well, what about the, the universe when it was all clustered in, into one? Where, where did that come from? Well, it was just out in space. God, God created that. Uh, God created that? Well, who created God? How do we how do we get here out of nothing? You have to have something to create, and it's used to scare me. It's doing it to me right now. You have to have something to create something. How are we here? How do you just? It's like think of total darkness. What sparked the one thing that created everything else? And how how did it just? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, hour number two on today's Kev Baker Show. But listen, don't forget, coming up right after the show here on TFRlive.com, Lucky will take you into the quantum connections. Stay tuned for that right after hour number two of today's show, which I'm about to get into now, with Derek Stroman. Now, you can follow him over on Facebook. I'll get Derek to give you any other social media links he's got as well, but he left us with a very interesting question I asked all of you to ponder over the break. Where is it we come from? Why are we here? Where do we go to? You know, I've seen our good friend Troy, big shout out to Troy. He had been listening to what we were saying in part one of the show, um, Derek, and I'm going to come back to where we come from and things in a moment, but I like what Troy had to say because we were talking about death and we were talking about where we go. And typically when we lose somebody, those left on the physical plane, we mourn, we're upset, we cry. Yeah. I recently lost my cat that I'd had for 20 years. It broke my heart, it still does. However, Troy is right in pointing out that in reality, like he does, we should celebrate somebody's life and we should be happy we should actually be joyous because they've never totally gone away. And um, they're always here still with us. And I find that the tears, the mourning, the grief, it's really for our own selfish reasons, you know, that we're not going to get to see somebody anymore or, or, or something we're not going to get to do with somebody anymore. So I like what Troy had to say there about, you know, it's hard. And I think about when Susie the cat left and if somebody had told me to be positive and joyous or a poke their eyes out and kick them clean where it hurts. But, you know, Troy's right, because nothing truly goes away. It doesn't go away. It's energy. And like I say, it's our selfish reasons that make us upset, right? Well, I got a, I got a cool story for you. I think oh, the nice. movie is called, um, I think, What Pets Want, if I remember correctly. Now, don't quote me on that. But I can tell you what was going on in this in this movie. So, 
I think the actor was maybe Dennis Quaid. It might have been Dennis Quaid starring. Okay. He had a pet since he was a kid. That pet passed away. But then as he got older, well, actually, okay. That pet that passed away kept being reincarnated in, in other pets, but not with Dennis Quaid, just in different households, going through a cycle of life, then passing away. Dennis Quaid in the movie kept getting older. Then finally, that same pet that he had as a child was reincarnated in another pet that found Dennis Quaid later in the movie. And then he started identifying that that was his dog from way back when. And the dog was trying to explain that to him by doing certain things. And he kept, you know, just, just imagine, you know, what the dog's name is Charlie. Charlie, is that you? And, and he's like, yeah, it's me, because it was certain things that Charlie always did. And, and you know, the, the new dog, however, is showing him, yeah, it's me, I'm Charlie, I'm Charlie. So this is what happened to me, to your story. Uh, I, this happened, I think, before we became acquainted. Uh, my longtime dog, best best friend, inherited from my, my father who passed away, Lance. We called him Sergeant Lance Stroman. Uh, I inherited him from my father because when my father passed in 2013, you know, it was just all kinds of confusion about what was, you know, you know how it is when people pass and everybody's like, I'm going to do this. I'm taking that. I want that. And, and I said, no, I'm taking Lance. Lance is coming back with me. So and Lance is we, he just got him. He's a puppy. You know, he was born on December, um, excuse me, on Christmas Day in December, you know. So he was a December dog. It was just, he, was, he was just one year old. Um, took him back. I mean, he had a rough life. He got attacked a week after being here where I live at called Dundalk. My wife was walking him. Dog jumps the fence, attacks both of them. You know, Lance is a pup, tears him up pretty good. And he was just kind of ruined ever since then. He just never, he never was a dog that really liked people a lot, you know, so, and, but he loved us, okay? So anyway, it was hard when, seven years later, it was hard when, when Lance passed away, okay? Um, really major blow on me, my family. Um, my daughter still talks about him to this day. But we, we got another pet. A cat, okay, by the name of Max. Now, I swear to goodness that Lance has been reincarnated in Max. Uh, you know, it, he he he's always around me. He he he, he comes just like Max used to. And that's the cat. Cats don't do these kind of things the way dogs do. But he's he comes up on me. He's, I mean, just like Lance did. He, by my side, I'm Kevin. When I tell you. Everywhere I go, he follows. If I'm if I'm leaned up against the, the kitchen counter, he jumps up on the counter and walks behind me. When I come up the steps here, he jumps up on you know the little yeah. the little wall there. He jumps up there. I, when I when I lay down to rest my head at night, he hops in the bed with me. And I tell my wife every day that I think Lance was reincarnated in him. And and why why wouldn't that be possible? What I mean. You know, if, if you believe, and that's another thing, and, and I just, I'm glad I brought this back into the, some of my thinking philosophy. Be careful because when you start really thinking stuff up, you make it so. You, you bring it to life in thought. An, enough powerful thought on things creates it. it it's, it's a, it's a, isn't this how, this is almost how I this is how I explain the power of prayer? Sorry, Derek. Um, I I think it's exactly the same as what you're talking about here. When you um put attention onto something and you focus on it, that the more you focus on it, the more energetic patterns you put out into reality, and the more you can start to attract these things towards yep. you. Yep. And we talk about that on some of our other shows too, a little bit. We we dabble in it, but I'm a firm believer in it. Um, it's just you know you, especially if it's if it's positive things. You're you're trying to you're trying to create something. You want 
you want positivity. I, I, I want to shift gears real quick because I had to do a little bit of research today, and it wasn't much. It's it, it, basic research anybody could do on YouTube. But um, I was looking at that um, that Higgs Bogan stuff, that that CERN stuff. That you know, it's it's real. Like it's a real device. I mean, these guys are really colliding atoms, and, and you know, and, and 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 protons and stuff, and they they have. There's no qualms with them about explaining what they're doing. You're talking some pretty brilliant minds, and they're they're telling you that they want to they want more answers to the universe, uh, and uh, you know they're trying to figure out, um, you know where where these black holes come from, and and, and if they can create them, they're you know manufacture them. They're they're literally just doing it. It's it's weird, but I, I don't. Even though I've seen that and I was watching those tutorials, Kev, I still don't understand. I mean, the funding for that for that collider machine. I mean, like, what wh- what is what is the point? And and I just don't, I don't I don't understand it. I just think it's it's just uses of, usage of technology, but I think it is affecting other things. I mean, they're they're colliding these atoms to try to just for that. Higgs bogun, and it only, and it only appears every now and then. They said, and they they ask themselves, well, how do they know it appears? Well, I guess it's a certain signature, but as many times as they smash these these protons together, it only appears every now and then. So yeah, what's this happening? is um, I mean. You mentioned atomic there. We go even lower than that because you, now you're getting into the realms of the subatomic, the quantum. Um, this Higgs boson, it, it was theorized for decades. And, and the, the kind of magical properties of this, at that time, undiscovered particle, they just thought it existed, was that everything around us, the fact that it's solid, that solidity really is provided by the Higgs boson. Yeah. And... They came up with CERN after there had been other particle accelerators at places like Fermi Labs, Brookhaven. Um, it wasn't new technology, but what they decided was they'd done calculations about how best to, in their words, there's no conspiracy at CERN because they talk about it publicly. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, they're, they're trying to recreate the, 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 the milliseconds after the Big Bang because mm-hmm. at that point, all the particles that ever was, never would be, and everything else, it's all coming into existence and you only see them very fleetingly and like you say they've been running this machine for years and arguably they've only detected the thing a, a couple of times a couple of times and and they openly openly talk about how they're yeah. opening portals to other dimensions and um, there's a famous photograph of four of the lead scientists they're actually stood holding a giant brass key a big huge key and of course, when you start to get into the work of my good friend and a guy I used to do a lot of shows with, Anthony Patch, you find out that CERN itself is built upon the alleged site of Apollo's temple. And you could interpret that, and some do, as being the abyss. So here mm-hmm. you have a giant science experiment where they openly talk about opening dimensions or doorways to other dimensions, and it sits above arguably the place that people say is the abyss. Is the abyss. Yeah. Uh, how coincidental is that? And it's pretty deep in the ground. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, that, that, they, they put it is, down there to shield it because of the magnets. And the, I'm, it's one of my favorite topics. I get excited when I get into it because um, I learned so much from Anthony Patch. And I, even in school, and when you watch how I went into the army, it was always the science, the kind of physics type stuff. So I've always yeah. had an interest in that. But that thing at CERN, you know, what we do know is scary enough. And it's very much like the Manhattan Project Mm -hmm. when they said that, you know, we we could be 50-50, we're going to set the atmosphere on fire here. But they've done it anyway, right? And it's the same for me at CERN. You know, if we're going to be ripping holes in dimensions, Derek. Will we do it? Will we not? And they must have paused for all of a picosecond and went, nah, we're going to go for it and switched it on anyway. Um, what it does to our reality, brother, I don't know. Yeah. I don't well, know. Well, you know, our, our buddy Bill Bean talks about it with, with some of the, you know, scripture changes and all that. But, uh, you know... Th- That's their so, own ha- fault. That is their own fault. Um, I'm going to pull up a picture here. Hang on now. Mm-hmm. CERN Mandela Bond. 
Um, we'll get the images up. Okay, so there's an image here, and people on the radio, you'll, you'll remember it when I worked with Anthony Patch. And it's got the scientist with the long grey hair. His name escapes yeah. me. Um, but what he's holding up is a sign that says Bond 1, and then it's got Mandela underneath it. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people attribute the Mandela effect to what's going on at CERN. And I can't tell you one way or another whether that's right or wrong, but what I can tell you is that this guy here was having a laugh. Because when yes. you start to look into what CERN does, and you talked about detecting these subatomic particles that are there one second, gone the next, it gets into a branch of mathematics that's called Monte Carlo statistics. Mm -hmm. Monte Carlo, Bond, the reference there, back to Mandela, that created a whole conspiracy in itself. But like I say, Derek, I can't tell you whether it's CERN alone that's causing the Mandela effects because CERN isn't the only one that's hitting the high powers that could literally be changing our reality. And one mm -hmm. last thing I'll show you before I, I, mm -hmm. I get you back into this. It's um, one of my favorite clips that's come out in recent years. And it's about the Department of Energy. And it's a gentleman called Ernest Moniz. And he used to be the head of the Department of Energy. And he appeared on the Chelsea Handler show. And it was on Netflix. And it was around the time when Stranger Things was on the TV. And mm -hmm. that storyline had the Department of Energy, the Upside Down, Another Dimension, Doorways to the Other Dimension. So this is what he had to say when he was asked on the Chelsea Handler show about it. Take a listen to this. I have a curious question for you. you I don't know if you ever saw Stranger Things. Have you guys paid attention to this phenomenon? <laughs> On the show, they have a Department of Energy, and they spend a lot of time investigating <laughs> a parallel universe. <laughs> what can you tell us about that? <laughs> I can tell you, first of all, that I've never seen it. But, but I'm aware uh, of it. Secondly, I, I believe this uh, fictional DOE laboratory uh, was operating in the 1980s. You can draw whatever inference you wish from that. Uh, third, I will note that actually we do work in parallel universes. <laughs> Wait, well, what? Yeah, actually we do work in parallel <laughs> universes. Yeah. yeah. So Derek, with all that in mind, what's going on at CERN? I've got no idea, dude. No idea, <sighs> but it could be anything, man. I I've had thoughts of time travel. I've had thoughts of stargates. You name it, bro. It's, it's all there. But what's really going on? I don't know. But you heard me mention that last night when we had Stan Gordon on, so about the, the time travel. Yeah. And I just think that um, kind of like what uh, we were talking about just a second ago with we're, the curiosity alone, you're creating the thought. You want to do investigations. You're smart enough to to do the, the logistics. If you have funding and you can convince somebody who's backing you with billions of dollars that this would be an interest for us if we don't do it. Maybe the Russians will do it first. Maybe the, the Chinese will do it first. Maybe, the, you know, uh, you know, North Korea well, well, do it first. What about this then, Derek? What about this, right? Because to take us back to what we're talking about as well, and I've had this conversation with Anthony Patch, and, and we both ended up kind of stumped. But like we've been saying, if you believe in something and you're intending with every fiber in your body to go and find it, for example, the Higgs boson, a theoretical mm. particle. There's a particle out there. We know it's there, but we haven't found it yet. Is there a chance? I know this is weird, but is there a chance that we could almost make it a self-fulfilling prophecy? If we think hard enough that there's a particle out there, don't be surprised when we eventually find it. Agreed. Agreed 100%. Um, we're, we're paving the way for the future. And, and this is how I'm going to retrack us. Retrack us. I like back. it. I like it, and man. I'm doing, and I'm doing it. You notice I use Trek. So I am I am going into the, the Star Trek frame of mind. Think about 
how long ago we started theorizing about the future and what things would be like in the future. This is a very long time ago, long before I was born, because some of these old programs, they go way back and they somehow they had visions of a, of a, a really, really um, high class uh, model of what the future would appear like in, in this in this day and era. Think about it. All those old movies when we were growing up, Kev, this time, the 21st century, 2021, oh, there should have been flying cars all over the place and uh, metallic um, metropolises of, 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 you know, city life. Some theorized um, the, the, the atmosphere would be unbearable. We'd be living in, a, in some kind of dome with just, you know, some kind of, you know, manufactured uh, air system for us to breathe and, and cultivate um you know, life, plant life and tree life all due to, you know, manipulation, not even not even real with just stuff you grew in labs and things of that nature. So they've had these visions for a very, very long time. Yeah, you know, we're learning on a daily basis, seems like how to how to utilize the natural resources, the natural resources that the earth has to offer. You know, we've created this stuff out of natural resources. How is that possible? to create light, manufacture light like this, and just and just plug it into sockets, um, tap into energy flow, tap into electricity. I mean, the, you know, they, there's Max. Hey, there's a cat, man. I tell you, right on cue, eh? Yeah, right on cue. Yeah. <laughs> That's right on cue. Um, it's, you know, so so the perception of what we have for, for the future it's it's starting to develop. You, you you know they're they're trying to keep up. It, it, to me, it's just, uh, it was almost like the the race to be the first man to land on the moon or to to put a satellite in orbit. You know. Yeah, it's it, always been a race, is not it? Yeah. It's 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 a race. We're 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 racing to get to the goal. You want to be the first. You want to you want to be able to say, well, the United United States did it first, or you know, and I just think it's it's not going to stop. So what am I saying in a nutshell, audience? Uh, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. It's okay. It's okay. We we are we are living in real time. This is the future, and we just need to embrace it. Embrace it. We we have. Guess what? I get. I bet you. Guarantee all of you guys have one of these out there. You never had this kind of power in the palm of your hands growing up. Yeah, beepers. Well, you mentioned the yeah, right. the Apollo project. Um, I remember the big rooms. People can think back. You've seen documentaries about that. Arguably, there's more technology in your phone now than sent man to the moon. Just think yeah. about that. It's amazing, isn't it? it? It's it's amazing. It's you know I'm I feel blessed. Uh, you know I'm I'm happy to be in this area. I mean, for, you're they, like me, dude. You thrive yeah, in the yeah, hard I times. I love, I love, love it. it as well. Love, uh, yeah, love I'm it. I'm, I'm always optimistic, even as things get worse around the world. Without getting to, into that too much, because we're keeping it nice and positive tonight. <laughs> I, I, am I really like that? Am I always positive? <laughs> no, but no, I like I like it, dude. A lot of the time, I'll be honest with you. Um, we talk a lot on the show here about alternative media because I've been in it a while now. And one thing that's always annoyed me about alternative media is it's like the mainstream media. If it bleeds, it leads. And the more dark you go in alternative media, the more clicks you get. It seems yeah. to be that when you have these positive shows, it doesn't have the, the, the appeal, the interest to people. But for me, the positive shows are the ones that really count the best because I think they leave people feeling like they've got hope. I, I think yeah. it's good that they hear two guys that aren't always doom and gloom. That are excited about the future. Sure, we've got we've got perils ahead of us. We've got trials and tribulations, but we always sure. have. And as a human race, we'll improvise, we'll adapt, we'll overcome, and I have to believe we'll win. And that's where I'm at with it, Derek. I, I love it. Way to way to kind of like if that was a closing. We could have ended the show right there on <laughs> Mike that drop out here. Just, man, you could have dropped the mic <laughs> now. That was, and you're absolutely right. I mean. You know why not discuss some of these things? Uh, Negativity is going to be there. It's it's around us at all times. Um, 
You know, how are we battling it? And we are battling it. No, nobody just wallows constantly in doom and gloom. Or when are you ever happy? You, 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 there has to be things that, that make you happy, that make you feel good. And you can talk about those things. You know, everything I said in, in our discussion is not all it's not all good. A lot of it is a lot of it is bad. Believe it or not, a lot of it is things you got to be paying attention to. You can't let your guard down ever. You can't. It, how can you be on guard 24/7, you know, 365? It's it's tough. So you find yourself vulnerable. You know, you if you're if you're a married married man, married woman and and you um you're a faithful husband, faith, faithful wife, um but you're you're always put in circumstances where you, you know your your faith is tested. That's tough. You're struggling. It's like ah, man. You know, I, you know I'm ah man. She's cute, man. I'm, you know, you gotta. You're battling. It's a constant battle daily. Every day you got a battle. You know, and, and we we're all in the same situation. You know, it's, it's the ones that just give up. I don't care. I'm cheating on my wife. Uh, you know, I'm I'm breaking down. You you drop your defenses. You know, force force field down. You know, you know, raise shields. <laughs> you know how it goes, Kevin. You know, and you you gotta you you have to be battling. You're 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 on a Starship Enterprise all the time, floating around, and here, here comes a fleet of you know Klingons at you. You know, like. <laughs> What do we do? You know, are they friendly? Uh, you know, and this is what this is like. I mean, you know, I'm giving analogies and examples, but this is life. This is life. You leave your house, you leave your house, and there you are. You're you're in your car, you're in your vehicle, and there you are. That's and that's another thing. These these chariots. I mean, it, I love the development of of science and how the how vehicles have uh, you you know been modified. To meet the the times now, you know all the technology in your vehicles. I mean, I you know I, I have a pretty decent vehicle and I, I love it, you know. And I I think of it, and Kev, you know how we are, <laughs> you know how we are in, in, in our minds. We're all you know we we see things a little different, right? You know that's my spaceship. Um, you know I set my coordinates, you know, and I, you know I'm I'm the captain of the ship. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> you what, dude, they're getting like spaceships now, aren't they? <laughs> You know, yeah. and very soon you'll just be able to put your feet up, kick back, get your phone out, self drive. You know, that's coming. Tesla's already doing it. Yeah. I, I drove, I drove by a Tesla the other day, and I just happened to look down. I was in my work truck. I happened to look down, and the guy ha who has a passenger, he's having a conversation like this. He's like, "Yeah, you know," but the windows are up, and he's like, that. And I said, "You know what?" He's got that car on autopilot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I must admit, I like wow. it. I like the whole autopilot because it's part of the future, the sci-fi future. When I was growing up, it's part of the world I thought we would already be in. Like, like you said, mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. we'd have been way past this by now. But listen, we've got one segment to go with Derek. Sure. Derek, let people know where they can follow you, brother. Well, um primarily facebook for me guys uh all you got to do is find me at derek stroman on facebook hold that thought hold that thought we'll be back Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Final segment of today's show with Derek Stroman. And I think you will all have been won over by the wonderful mind of this guy talking about energies. We've been talking about a lot of stuff tonight. But we got cut off before the break, and I want to give people the opportunity to find out where they can keep up to date with everything that Derek's doing. And don't forget, he is the fourth horseman of the apocalypse well no he's the fourth horseman of warrior mode he's mr street cred he's here with me derek um, let people know again where to follow you brother so uh, again uh, thanks for allowing me to be on your show uh it's, it's been fun uh, i'm having a great time uh i was really pumped about being on the show tonight and it's everything i imagined um so, yeah, but you got you guys can find me primarily on Facebook. That's where I do most of my stuff. 
Derek Strowman, D E R E K. Strowman is the banner reads in the back, S T R O M A N. Uh, I think there's an image of me <clears throat> with a shoulder mount and one of my cameras. That's how you can find me there. Uh, Instagram, you can find me at Strowmind. So that's at sign S T R O M I N D on Instagram. And I also have a YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube at Derek Strowman uh, and Strowman Entertainment Television. I got a bunch of content up there, just short film projects, commercials, sports. I do a lot of filming, um, and I just put all my content on that channel there. So it's a, it's a sh- uh, smorgasbord of um, just material. Oh, I like it. You used a smorgasbord. That reminds yeah. me of my good friend, Joe Joseph. He used to come on the show all the time. He's the guy that roped me into doing radio. And um, wow, I haven't heard anyone saying that for a good long while. Um, See, that, that's the European Emmy, man. You know? you, the the <laughs> smorgasbord of uh, topics to cover. That's what we Joe used to say all the time. But I've got your uh, channel up here. I'm going to yep. drop it over yep. at the TFR chat room for all the Wookiees in there. And before we launch back into it, don't forget, folks, don't go anywhere after today's show because we roll differently than most of the networks. Yes, we do. We've got live radio all the way. Not only that, but we've got 33, yes, 33 shows to choose from. And that number will get people wondering, are they Masonic over there at TFR? Well, we do it on purpose, folks. We want people to to raise an eyebrow and think, hmm, is there some hidden code? Because we know, we know that's how your minds work out there. And it's a good thing because we see signs, we see patterns. We like to analyze things. We like to think about things and we like to talk about them. There's not enough talking in the world anymore. You know, social media is where most communications take place nowadays, strangely enough. And for me, communication is lost on there. And then add to that the trolls, the infighting, people not wanting to admit that they were wrong. We were talking during the break, Derek, about how I was wrong. It's three of the hardest words, especially for a man to say with our our ego and our pride. But um, I've really enjoyed today's show, brother. And before I launch into a quick interrogation system or um, session with you about the woo, I want to give you the floor because you've been looking forward to coming on for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, I always believe that shows happen at the right time for the right reason, uh, and they won't happen until it's the right time. So for whatever reason, today is that time for you. And I want to give you the floor for as long as you want to talk to the audience. Got thousands of people listening right now, brother. And uh, I want them to pay attention and hear what you have to say. So I'm going to mute up. I'm going to pass over to you. And then I'm going to take you into the woo for the final part of the show. Over to you, bro. Well, all I want to say uh, to everybody listening is, you know, just don't give up on, on a good fight. There's nothing like a good fight. Good challenge pushes you you know it's easy to say man i'm done i'm throwing in the towel i deal with a lot of people who it's easy to just throw in the towel man i don't want to deal with these people no more i just give up i'm a coach too so it's hard for me to give up yeah giving up i I don't like giving up i don't like quitting the quitting is it's tough that's why I've, i've been married so long i don't quit i don't like quitting but there is a time to throw in a towel. There is a time. But when is it? There, nobody's really got that answer, that timeline answer to say, when this day at that time is when it's time. Nobody has that. You have to know when it's time. You 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 can't accept too much abuse. If you're being abused physically, mentally, I mean, you're gonna have to do something about that eventually. You can't tolerate that, but you have to think about that. I do. I think, well, how bad is it? You know, if somebody beat me up, am I beating somebody up? You know, am I verbally being harsh all the time? You know, acceptance. Am I am I really not being that bad? I'm I'm asking questions. I'm I'm being understanding. I'm treating you with with respect and dignity. So if you're giving me that in return, well, it's not time to give up. Let's work this out. Let's work this out. We can do it. That's what I'm saying about not giving up. I've coached 
little kids, five, six. I've coached teenagers. You know, everything changes. You get a little older, right? Teenagers, mildly cussing back and forth. Don't want to give up on them yet. Keep fighting. I win some of those battles because I don't give up. I coach semi-pro men, some my age, uh, really stubborn, ego-driven. Don't give up on them either. You know, uh, you know I have a, a five-year-old daughter. You know, obviously you're not going to give up on somebody that young, so it just starts all over. You know, it, you you you. It's my first daughter, so I have to do things differently than I did with my son, who's 21. So these challenges, these these battles, we just we fight through them. We fight through them. You you come out hopefully victorious on the other side. You know, and that's that's just how I do it. You know, that's the, you know it's Kev says, and you know others say that you know always have this positive attitude, but that's that's what it takes because it's so easy to to succumb to negativity. Ne- the negative stuff is just like you just it just drags you down. It's like a spiral just dragging you down, whirlwind into a place where it's hard to come back from. You know, and I've I've been there a couple times, but to be honest with you, to be honest with all of you, I can't really recall a time where I've been that far in the pit. Somehow, I've been able to pull myself together. You know, and, and you know, utilize people who who care as well. Their help, they can they can help pull you up too. Sometimes, but you just gotta watch. It's it's tough. Who who's really there to help? You know, we're we're born into this into this world and we're just left to figure it out hopefully there's somebody that can you know kind of help guide you or guide us uh to a place where you know it makes it a little easier for us to figure it out but that that's not promised that's not promised you know you can research whatever i you, you know what i do i i try to look you know, I use I use the gifts that that God gave. You know, I use the gifts that we were we were born with: sight, sound. You know, um, the ability to to speak words. And I watch, and I just see. Dang, I, I watched my uncle doing some pretty rough stuff. And I got a couple uncles, and they're 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 slowly going to the other side of uh, of existence as well. And I'm just like. Nah, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. And then they, you know, people try to bring you into their company and show you how to do things wrong. And you feel a certain type where you're like, ah, do I want to do this? Or don't I want to do this? Somehow I got lucky. I said, I don't want to do that. You know, I had a good father. My father was a good teacher, you know, um, and he was perfect by no means, but he did enough. You know, my mom, too. They did enough to, to assure that I could use some sense of common sense to help me survive, you know, all the all the, the, the different um, different things that could be thrown at you as, as, as being out in the world as somebody trying to survive out there that's no longer coddled or protected or under mom and dad's wing and supervision. Because that's what it's about. You try to uh, get yourself, or, you know, get people groomed up to be able to survive out there on their own. You know, sustain work, um, know how to deal with society and, and survive in society. You know, um, I don't know. I just, you know, I, me personally, since you know, I, I get all philosophical all the time about stuff. I can go on and on, but in a nutshell. We do this all the time. All of us do. You know, you have to do it, Kev. I have to do it, even if we don't want to. But, you know, it's 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 a matter of you get out there and it's like, it's, it's like what you say earlier, you know, it's something like a deer in headlights. It's like, okay, I'm here. I look around. There's, I'm, I am one of uh, a few billion people. How am I going to survive amongst the billions? What am I going to do? Am I, am I food? Am I prayer? Am I, am I one of the strong? Am I one of the weak? Where do, where where am I at in, in that spectrum? 
am I like the weakest? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, well, I'm up there. Am I well, one you're of the You're up there, dude. You're up there. You're shining bright. You're you're positive and <laughs> vibes. I tell you, dude. Um, you carry an aura with you the same way I say that Bill carries one with him, and I like it because Thank it is you. positive. And and I think if a lot more people had your attitude, um, not to say agree with everything you agree with, but that positive outlook, that that determination not to quit, not to give in. It's always easier to quit and to give in to yeah. temptation, folks. That's the easy route. I found that out the hard way. It, it says more about somebody w when you're determined, when you keep going, no matter how hard it gets, you keep piling on through. And I, I want to ask you, Derek. Sure. At this time, um, the year 2021, I've found that over the past couple of years, I've become very aware of the fact that people that come into my sphere, you know, my kind of personal space, they, they cross my path. However mm -hmm. it happens, the majority of them, it seems to me, they've crossed my path. Well, there's some reason, there's some purpose to it. Um, people might describe it as like a soul family, a, a mm -hmm. tribe. Maybe we've all been here before. I think during these trying times, and they are trying times, none of us have lived through anything like we've gone through in the past 18 months, mm -hmm. folks. And the fact we've got this far, with all the changes, we should give ourselves a pat on the back. Yeah. But do you think, do you think, Derek, in your opinion, um, do you think old souls or energies that have crossed paths before, do you think we are coming back together? Mm -hmm. Do you think we recognize one another on a subconscious level and and all the pieces of the game just happen to arrange themselves so that the right people come along, along at the right time. The Earth has been around, I don't know, I think it's uh, 45,000, uh, 45, um, uh, how do you say that? Billion, 45 billion yeah, years? A, a, a gajillion, billion. just call it a bazillion. Yeah, I can't even yeah, say it right. We, we can't picture numbers like not, that, dude. But... The point is, that's a really long time. I mean, that's a really, really long time, like really long time. So you're talking about a constant recycling. You, you know how they say history repeats itself. I mean, we're, we're going over and over and over. You know, it's, you know, you know, we talk about interdimensional stuff as well, right? So you're talking about just a, a repeat, a repetition of, of things. It's, you know, it, it's gonna happen then it's going to change and everything just completely looks unfamiliar and then it's going to come back and but the only thing that i'm noticing being you know from an era of 1974 when i was born i see that we are going to utilize the the natural resources that are given to us that that is never going to be the same we're never going back and you, you know, all your apocalyptic, apocalyptic um, you know, uh, you know, zombie apocalypse um, uh, foresights happen. Then you then we're kind of re re reduced back to uh, kind of the Stone Age in a way where everything of technology is going to be shut down and everybody's uh, fighting strictly for survival uh, against maybe a separate um, threat such as beings that are, are, are undead. Now, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm going there with the walking dead thoughts and all that, but uh, other than that, if, if we're not, if we don't sort of come to some kind of uh, apocalypse of mankind, then what's gonna happen? We're gonna continue to thrive. We're gonna continue to learn and grow. All the stuff that we talked about even this evening with CERN, all these things are gonna get better. When I say better, they're, they're going to figure it out because that's what we, as 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 mankind, we keep figuring things out and, and until we crack the code. So, uh, all the, the the possibilities that we keep thinking can happen, they're not going to quit. You're not going to quit. I'm not going to quit until we, we make these things manifest. So. That's that's how I feel about it now, as well, far well, as we go. Okay. Well, let me get a little bit controversial here then, right? I'm going to ask you something. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm open to, to either way of looking at this, but we hear a lot about how technology is evil 
and how it's leading us down a dark path and we hear about transhumanism and you pointed to your phone earlier on um, I would argue that we're already externally plugged into the matrix mm -hmm. but we also know that we're on a path right now where my good man Elon Musk he's got his neural link there's other companies out there talking about connecting us into the system into the matrix my question to you is this is this part of our natural evolution could this actually have been part of a divine plan in the first place or is it totally evil and the reason i ask could it be is because all of these tools that have led us into ai and the technology that we've got here we've utilized things that are here and thus far no big divine hand has come down and smited it away um, what if the plan is for us to get even closer to, in his image, um, something technological, something silicon-based? And um, it's a hypothetical question, audience. Um, Don't get triggered. Um, but what do you say to that? So uh, that's a great question. So this is my answer for that question. You, you have to have each other in all things for one to exist. So... With technology, th think think of uh, let's 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 use God and devil, okay? If you believe in God and, and the devil, then they have to co. All right, so both are going to utilize w whatever is being created to its respective advantage. So you create a a, a supercomputer. Well, the positive, the good, is going to use it for good. The bad which has to exist because you can't have the other one without the bad is going to do what it has to do to utilize it. So you create uh, superb technology. Well, then, then you got your bad guys, your hackers. They're going to come in. They're going to, they're going to uh, learn how to steal. We had a school in our area um, that was shut down because their system got, their system got hacked, shut the whole system, shut the whole school See, down. I don't get that. I don't mean when hackers go after banks or, or something like that school come on it's it's part of it it's it you cannot have one without the other I, but this is what we do we have and 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 I, this might counteract a little bit of my positivity um but people have this perception that everything is just going to be so perfect one day and so great this paradise living paradise and everybody's happy no it's not supposed to happen like that. There, you wouldn't even appreciate feeling good if it wasn't for knowing how bad and how hurtful when you feel bad feels. You you wouldn't you wouldn't know. It, it'd just be a normal thing. Way earlier in this in this conversation, um, we 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 talked we talked about um, just what you know what it you know what what people how. Of feel at, at all times, like you know, just just po trying to be trying to be positive at all times. You, it's it's very difficult to to be positive at all times because something is going to happen to you to make you feel bad. It it you know it's 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 if God wanted to, He could have made us all the same. Look look how perfect we are. There's no you cannot tell me if we're all born with you know with, with Lord willing with all your appendages. You can be created perfect. He could have easily made us all the same. But no, we're all different. We're all different. Why 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 are we all different? It, it, it didn't have to be that way. How is that even possible anyway? Keep creating something that's that's different. All the different creatures on the planet. So you mean to tell me that with a snap of a finger, he could have just made us all be the same? So what what did he do? He created all these things to interact and have differences. And and then that that proves our integrity and our strength to survive, to be able to deal with all the elements that are being put forth to, towards you. Natural disasters, things we don't even have control over, floods, tsunamis, tornadoes, hurricanes. We have hurricane season. I mean, you know, you're talking about natural disasters, things that white people and and, and 
And there's only but so much control that we have over it. But guess what do we do? We're resilient. We fight back. We we figure out ways to, to, to build barriers. We detect it. We have the we have meteorologists that's telling us when a storm is coming. What do you do now? You prepare. You understand what I'm saying? So it's 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 very it's you you have to just dial it back and just pay it and pay attention to what's going on. Now I, I hope I was able to answer your question, but because there was there was more that I know there's more that I wanted to say um, that was pertaining to what we're talking about. But it, in in a nut in a nutshell, you 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 have you have to have you have to have it. You have to. So again, and I remember where I left off at with with the technology. Okay. These guys that know how to use it for bad are going to use it for bad. There's always going to be a way to crack whatever new system there there is or being designed, because it's 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 about the brilliance of the mind. If you're if you're um, skilled in that department and know how to get into a system, what what good is having that skill if you're not using it now? Let's say you were you were fired. Yeah, I mean you've seen the stories, um, the 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 bad guy story, the mad scientist that was fired from his job. He was he was a brilliant mind, right? You yep. remember you know those stories, um, Lex Luthor. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm going to create super robots and I'm I'm going to destroy half of you know Gotham City, you know. I mean because that's what they do. They're they're ven- What is it? There we go. Vengeance, vengeance back at you. I'm going to show the world that you should have picked me. You shouldn't have turned me down. Guess what? You you can't have super nice Derek Stroman if you don't have Lex Luthor. You can't. You can't have Superman. You can't have him. What, what good is Superman no, flying yeah, around? What right. you, and, you know, I'm, I, I agree with you. You know, I think life is meant to be a struggle. You, you gotta... look at, yeah, you look at any period in history and there's always been this kind of top-down system where there's a few have everything and the rest of us are just struggling along. And like Derek says, you know, you can't truly appreciate something you've got until you've had it taken away, until you've reached the depths of, of, of whatever it is. You know, only then you can appreciate it. So I really i have enjoyed this so much, brother. We didn't even get a chance to get into I was going to ask you um, about Stan Gordon that we spoke to last night. 62 wow. years, 62 years in the game, dude. And, and we didn't even get to that tonight. So we're going to have to have you back on next month and we'll, we'll get back into some woo. And, and before before we uh, close out, I just wanted to say, and this was something that was, um, you know, on the, on the tip of my brain, I, and I'm I, I'm having the opportunity to say it. Now. Um, uh, Kev, we together as uh, the Four Horsemen and also just um you know here on the kev baker show we have a bright future ahead of us for things to come and i think you talk you, you know this is piggybacking off of your um you know everybody's meant to, you know meets each other for a reason and you know everything happens for a reason and our energies and paths crossing crossing each other um i had a really good conversation with travis you know our buddy travis short last night as well and we were talking about some things to come so i uh, get ready man I, there's going to be a good chance that we're going to see each other in person real soon all of us so uh that's something that i'm looking forward to and um, I'm going to be um, really pressing hard to um, to try to get a chance to meet you in person and and as well as uh, Travis. So just I'll keep be that in America mind. once, dude. It was oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. I would love to come back, but I I want to wait a while if I'm going to come back to America because I don't know. It just seems a little bit crazy over there right now, you know, just a little <laughs> bit crazy. And from a guy that lives in Glasgow. We're like the number one stab capital of Europe. And we've also been voted the friendliest city in Europe in the same year. So um, for somebody like me in Glasgow to say America looks crazy right now, dude, it's crazy <sighs> right now. And we can talk about that the next time you come sure. on. But listen, folks, check out Derek over on Faceborg, as I call it. Um, oh, I hate Facebook. I dude. Yeah, I'm more of a Twitter man, and I'm really childish on Twitter because I just like to attack idiots. <laughs>